In this very bearish market, just about every stock feels like a falling knife, and you know what they say about trying to catch a falling knife. I'm Seth Freiberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan, and the traders on our proprietary trading desk here see falling knives as opportunities, particularly when those trades can be expressed using option strategies. So if you'd like to learn about a very simple option strategy to take advantage of an opportunity that exists today for lots of stocks that appear to be in free fall, then stick around because I think you're going to find this really helpful. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. So I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so there are very few stocks that have had a tougher go of it than Meta, what used to be known as Facebook, which since the beginning of the year has dropped from its yearly high of 343 in early January down as low as a little more than 50% to 169 at one point, while the rest of the market, although practically in bear territory, isn't taking that kind of a drubbing. And so what most day and swing traders may not realize is that while these are situations that call for a great deal of caution, there are strategies that can be implemented using options that provide a really nice margin for error and a very high probability of success. Now, before we get into exactly how that strategy works, I wanted to let you know that if you would like to learn three more option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade even if you're outright wrong on the direction, then click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free workshop registration page in the new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this, so pause this video, sign up now, and then resume watching. Okay, so now in order to understand how we're going to use options to take advantage of falling knife opportunities, we need to make sure that everyone watching this video understands how put options on stocks work. If you already know how they work, just hang in there. This is going to be really quick, and then we'll jump right back into teaching the strategy. All right, so what's known as a put option on a stock entitles the buyer of that option to sell 100 shares of a stock that he owns at a certain price called the strike price of that put option, regardless of what price the stock is actually trading at when he exercises that right. The buyer of the put option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of the option is taking the risk that the stock will go way below the strike price of that put, in which case the buyer can exercise his option and force the put seller to buy his shares at the put option strike price, which is higher than where the market's trading, causing the seller's account to get marked down. So even if the market goes way below the strike price of the put option, the buyer of that put has the right to sell 100 shares of that stock at the strike price of that put. So he'll get way above the market price for those shares by virtue of owning that put. And so the premium of the put option reflects the risk that the market thinks that the put seller has that those shares will be going much lower than the strike price of that put. So all other things being equal, when a stock price goes down, the price of the put option for that stock will go up because the put seller's chances of taking a loss because the market has blown through his strike price gets larger as the stock's price continues to drop. And just one more thing, if on the day of expiration, the stock closes above the price of the put option, then that put option expires worthless because no one's going to exercise their right to sell a stock at a price lower than it's selling in the open market. So the put just expires worthless. Okay, so now keeping that in mind, let's head back to April 21st. And as you can see, after an earnings report that the market absolutely hated back on February 2nd, 
you'll see that after that, the stock briefly bounced over 200 over the next month or so. And on this day, April 21st, it again dropped below 200 and was trading below 200 most of the day. So dropping below 200 itself wasn't what would have caused us to take notice on this day. Instead, what got our attention big time is that indicator that you'll see below the price and volume charts. The indicator known as implied volatility is a measure that sort of takes the temperature of the options market and figures out how much price volatility the options market is expecting for a particular stock. And you'll notice that day that the implied volatility of FB spiked substantially that day, pushing to 0.7, which is a huge leap actually from the day before, essentially a 40% increase over where it was located the day before at 50. And so that's the kind of thing that's going to get an options trader's attention because it can create unique opportunities that don't come around every day. So let's now kind of zoom out and look at a price chart of FB over the last three years. And as you can see, FB, even at the height of the COVID-19 crash, hadn't closed below 145 in over three years. And so let's suppose that we figured, hey, that's likely to be the case for at least one more month. So suppose that we go out to an options chain just one month out to May 20th, and we go ahead and sell 75 of the 145 puts whose strike price is more than 42 points below where the stock is trading. And we receive $2.44 for those and then turn right around and buy 75 of the 140 puts for protection. Well, in that case, we've entered into what options traders refer to as a put credit spread. And you'll see in a minute exactly why we did this. Now, let's first break down, though, what's happened from a cash flow perspective, because that's going to be very important, as you'll find out shortly. And so starting with those 145 puts, we sold we sold those for 244, as you can see, and each options contract represents 100 shares of FB stock. So you multiply that by 100 and we sold 75 of them. And so calculating it all out, it comes to 18 three of cash received for selling those put options but then as you can see from the calculation at a price of a dollar 86 the protective puts that we buy at 140 those actually cost us 13,950 leaving us with still a net positive cash flow of four thousand three hundred fifty dollars and your broker will require you to have at least thirty three thousand one fifty if you wanted to execute this trade which is the trade's absolute worst case scenario. I also wanted to point out another thing about this trade, and that is what options traders refer to as the delta of an option. And the delta, in short, is basically a prediction of how much the option's price will move based on how much FB stock itself moves. I'd like you to notice that the delta of the 145 puts that we sold, which expire a month later on May 20th, those options have a delta of 10.8, as you can see. And so options with a delta of around 10, it turns out, it correlates to only about a 10% chance that those options will expire with any value on the day that they expire. Now, you'll find out a little bit later why that's important to us, but suffice it to say that we really had three considerations when putting this trade on. We had that big spike in options volatility, the short puts, which were located 32 points below the stock's price at a 10 delta, and the fact that that price was below a price the stock had not traded at for over three years. And so let's move now to May 20th, the day that these options expired. And, and as you can see, FB closed up at 193.54. And so now we're in a position to value these options. And so let's start the analysis by remembering that we collected 4350 for originally executing this trade. But after that, there's not much to say. FB closed at 193.54, which is almost 50 points above both the short and long puts we executed as part of the credit spread trade. Well, no one's going to exercise the right to sell you their stock at 145 or 140 when the market is willing to pay over 193 for them. And so that those rights are just worthless and those options therefore expire worthless, leaving us with that original 4350 that we collected 30 days earlier, return of over 13% in exactly a month. Now, one more important point I'd like to make is the significance of the implied volatility spike to the decision 
to enter this trade. And so by comparison, let's go back a month earlier to March 21st. And as you can see on that date, the implied volatility of that date for FB was closer to 0.45, 60% lower than the April 21st date when we initiated that credit spread trade that we just shared with you. And so let's take a look at an apples to apples trade on March 21st when things were much less volatile. So just like before, we move out about a month to the options that expire on April 22nd, and we move down about 43 points to the 165 short puts, and we sell 75 of those, buying 75 of the 160 puts, just like we did before. Now, let's take a look at how much we collected this time. And as you can see, we only received the price of 65 cents for those puts, where we received the price of 244, almost four times as much for the same distance from the market in the high volatility period a month later. And so we only received 48.75 for those puts, whereas before the puts we sold were valued at over $18,000. And after deducting the cost of the protective puts, again, that save five points lower, we ended up with 1350, which is less than a third of what we received just a month later. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is the fact that any kind of quality trading involves identifying edges and then if possible stacking additional edges on top of those to produce a really high quality, highly probable trade that is set up optimally for potential and substantial success. By waiting for FB to experience an implied volatility spike, we literally more than tripled the potential income on the trade simply by spotting that opportunity. So while you never want to literally catch a falling knife, this kind of put credit spread trade in a falling market can often be very rewarding if you stack the odds in your favor like we did in this trade. This kind of thinking is what makes professional traders successful, and now you can add that to the knowledge of your own playbook. Now, just to remind you, if you're serious about trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen, or you can head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it.